America's new foundation will be built one community at a time, and it starts with you. Hollis, those are just a few examples of the literally thousands of good deeds done by the 1,800-plus players of the National Football League, which begs the question, we hear so much negative about professional athletes. Are NFL players role models? Well, first of all, we're role models whether we want to be or not. We've made it to the pinnacle of our sport. And, um, you know, the, the kids nowadays, they look up to you. They, you see them, they have your jersey on and, and things like that. And, you know, you go to a hospital visit or go do a school talk, and you can see, you can see how just you being there lights up their day. And uh, I think some, sometimes we lose sight of that when we're uh, occasionally being selfish and doing stuff that we're not supposed to be doing. And, you know, we occasionally we're not role models, but then that's when a parent is supposed to step in and let, let them know that, you know, we're human. We're human beings, and we, we're going to make mistakes, and it's up to them to be able to forgive us. You talk about that, and Charles Barkley really brought it to the forefront probably 10, 15 years ago with that Nike commercial by saying, I'm not a role model. Parents and mentors that are in the neighborhoods should be role models. Does that sit well with you? I mean, do you agree with that statement that it's not up to you to be the role model for the kids? Well, no, I, everybody's not going to agree with that statement, but, you know, a kid could take that as being a role model of being somebody who speaks up, you know, for what they believe in. And if Charles believes that he's not a role model, then so be it. You know, I, I feel like I'm a role model. I do things in the community. They're not brought to the forefront like if I was to um, have a DUI or something. Mm -hmm. But I do things, but I don't do things for, you know, for accolades. And I think that's what that's what that's what's missing. A lot of times you see, a lot of guys do a lot of things and they're not recognized. But is that part of being a role model then is doing things for quote unquote the right reason rather than the recognition? Yeah, I, I think that's part that, that's part of actually being a role model is you do things because you see that they need doing. You're not you're not you're not saying what another person is not doing. So you're doing and, you, and you're not you're doing and you're not just talking about what other people need to be doing. Now, is playing the only thing that uh, NFL Play 60 is promoting? Not really. It's really just to talk about nutrition as well as going outside and playing for, for 60 minutes a day. Nutrition, I think they go hand in hand. Uh, not only do you have to go outside and play, but you have to eat right as well uh, on a daily basis. Is there also a health addition to this part, to this uh, NFL Play 60? Yeah, it is. You know, you have a program set up like Fuel, Fuel Up Play 60, and it's a, it's a program that's designed to help dairy products, uh, to add dairy products into your everyday meal, so, so you can go out there and, and have full energy as you're going outside playing. Now, I know this has the backing of the First Lady and the President. Um, what, what about if I, I'm a big guy? What if I, what if I want to play 60? Well, you can log on to NFLRush.com and learn information about tips and games on how to get healthy. Good evening, this is Hollis Thomas coming to you live from NFL Broadcasting Boot Camp. Brandon Marshall, who was recently traded from the Denver Broncos to the Miami Dolphins for two second-round picks, has just become the highest-paid wide receiver in NFL history. The deal is reported to be worth $47 million over the next four years. Dear Lord, man. $24 million of that is guaranteed, with $29 million being earned in the next three years. Another tantalizing move was made by two NFC East rivals in the Washington Redskins and the Philadelphia Eagles. The Redskins gave up their second round pick for this year's draft and a conditional pick for next year's for the services of Eagles six time Pro Bowl quarterback Donovan McNabb. This move is the boldest that Redskins coach Mike Shanahan has made since the takeover. And it brings into question the future of, Re of current Redskins quarterback Jason Campbell. It's Monday Night Football, 40th season. Joining you tonight live from New Orleans, highly anticipated matchup, the New Orleans Saints and the New England Patriots. Ian Eagle along with Hollis Thomas. Everybody in the league excited about this one. Most definitely. It's Monday Night Football. The whole neighborhood is watching, and the, Saint, the, the Saints are undefeated, and the Patriots are trying to stop them from breaking. The perception around the league is that the Saints are this prolific passing team and the numbers would back it up but Hollis you believe their running game can stack up with the best that the NFL has to offer most definitely that's true Mike Bell and uh, Pierre Thomas both have 500 yards each but a lot of times teams just focus on Drew Brees and him uh, dissecting the defense Brees throwing on first down and caught Brees with a perfect throw Devery Henderson hauls it in a 33 yard hookup right out of the box 
Most definitely. As you, as you can see, they give him a little play action. And you see that Derry Henderson looks the ball in. He actually looks it in without putting his hands up, which makes it hard for Lee. Lee Bottom on the 23 to, uh, to see the ball coming. This New England defense. It's anchored by They Vince. still have big names, but yeah, they do have, they strike fear like they used to? Well, they have big guys, too. They have uh, uh, my trusted compadre Vince Wolf up there in the middle anchoring things down. Uh, he, he will be a key component in trying to stop the Saints, uh, uh, what the Saints are trying to do. From the 21, give is to Bell. Nice cut by Bell. And Bell falling forward at the 15-yard line. That's a six-yard pickup for Bell. Well, Bell has benefited from, uh, he was once in Denver. And uh, I don't know if you know about Denver's one cut system, uh, as you can see on the replay there. He just puts, sticks one foot in the ground and gets as many yards as he can. So you think Mike Shanahan is having an impact on this game? Uh, pretty much. I mean, um, I, I think it's more Alex Gibbs. I think he, he was.